Which gaming laptop is better, Lenovo's Legion 5 or HP's Victus 16? I've compared both to find out all of the differences. Both of my laptops have similar specs, AMD's 8-core Ryzen 7 5800H processor, Nvidia's RTX 3060 graphics, 16 gigs of memory, a 512 gig SSD, and a 1080p screen with high refresh rate, 15.6 inches for the Legion and 16.1 inches for the Victus. Both laptops have decent build quality considering they're both plastic. The only thing I'd really fault the Victus for is that it has more screen wobble. Legion stopped, Victor's still going, still going, still going, and stopped. It just goes for ages, though it's not really a problem unless you bump the laptop or desk or move the laptop around. I never found the screen to actually wobble while just typing on it normally. My Legion 5 has a dark blue finish, but it's also available in white, while I've got a white Victus, but it's also available with darker blue or silver finishes. The Victus was a little wider, makes sense as it's got a slightly larger 16 inch screen. The Legion was a little deeper, but it's extremely close, and thickness was quite similar. The Legion weighs slightly less if we're just comparing the laptops alone, but its larger and heavier 300 watt power brick makes the overall package heavier compared to the Victus. Now both of these laptops have 1080p screens, but the Legion's is 165Hz, while the Victus has a 144Hz screen. However, the Legion is also available with a slower 120Hz screen, while the Victus has a 1440p upgrade path. Or for 40 US dollars more, it also seems like you can upgrade the Victus to a higher quality 1080p screen. Unfortunately, the only Victus that I could buy had the worst possible screen option. Only the the Legion has a MUX switch, so you've got the option of running it with either Optimus enabled for best battery life, or with Optimus disabled for better gaming performance. With the Victus, you're stuck with Optimus enabled. The lowest end Victus screen doesn't even have FreeSync, meanwhile the Legion 5 has FreeSync when Optimus is enabled, but it also has G-Sync when Optimus is disabled. The Legion 5 screen, shown by the red bars, has a much higher colour gamut compared to HP's Victus 16 in the purple bars, but this might be different if you get the screen upgrade on the Victus. The screen brightness of the Legion 5 was better at 90 to 100% brightness, otherwise at lower levels the Victus was a little brighter. The Victus still felt dim at full brightness for me, so paying $40 for that screen upgrade is probably worth it. The response times are also quite different. The Victus has one of the slower 144Hz panels that I've tested with a 17 millisecond response time, while the Legion's was much faster at under 7 milliseconds. But again results will vary with different screen options. Slower screen response time contributes to the total system latency, which is the amount of time between a mouse click and a gunshot fire on the screen in CSGO. The Legion was definitely quicker, while the Victus was one of the slower results I've recorded. Both had very minor backlight bleed, I never noticed it during normal use on either laptop, but results will vary between laptop and panels. Both laptops have a 720p camera above the screen in the middle. Neither have IR for Windows Hello Face Unlock, but the Legion has a switch on the right to physically disconnect the camera. This is what the camera and microphone look and sound like on the Legion 5, and then this is how things look and sound like over on the HP Victus. Both laptops have backlit keys. My Legion has a 4-zone RGB keyboard, but there's also a white-only version, while my Victus just has white keys, which were hard to see with the white finish due to a lack of contrast unless you're in a dark room. So for that reason alone, I'd recommend anything other than the white finish. Personally, I preferred typing on the Victus. The Legion still has an above-average keyboard, I just liked the clickier feel on the Victus. The Legion also has larger arrow keys, which I personally prefer. The Victus has its power button right next to delete and backspace, but fortunately an accidental mispress doesn't do anything, you have to hold it to sleep. Both have precision touchpads, the one on the Victus is physically larger in both dimensions, but the click just felt nicer to me on the Legion and I never had an issue with its size. Both have their speakers on the left and right towards the front. I thought both sounded decent, but the Victus sounded better to me. The Legion was just a bit tinnier sounding comparatively. The latency mon results were fairly similar from either the laptop, no big differences. Only the Legion has an air exhaust vent on the left side. They both have a USB Type-C port, though the Legion's is faster Gen 2 while the Victus is slower Gen 1. Otherwise both have a 3.5mm audio combo jack. The Victus also has its power input, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.1, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, and an SD card slot on this side. Both laptops have an air exhaust on the right. The Victus has two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, while the Legion has one, and the Legion also has the camera 
a disconnect switch here. The rest of the Legion's I.O. is on the back, which I personally prefer as bulky cables run out the back and stay out of the way. From left to right the Legion has Gigabit Ethernet, a second USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, three more USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, HDMI 2.1 and the power input on the right. The Legion also has these icons above the rear ports which help with seeing where you're plugging cables into without turning the laptop around. So basically the main I.O. differences are that the Legion has four USB Type-A ports while the Victus has three. The Legion has two USB Type-C ports while the Victus just has the one. But the Legions are also faster Gen 2 while the Victus has slower Gen 1. And the one on the back of the Legion can also be used to charge the laptop. The Victus does not have Type-C charging. But the Victus does also have an SD card slot, something that the 15-inch Legion 5 does not have. But the 17-inch Legion 7 does have that. Now all Type-C ports on both laptops offer DisplayPort 1.4 support. And both that along with the HDMI ports connect directly to the NVIDIA graphics bypassing Optimus. So this does mean that we can attach an external screen to the Victus in order to boost its performance in games. The Legion has an extrusion on the front and the middle which makes opening the lid easier. But that said I didn't really have any problems opening the Victus. The Legion also has flip to boot as an option you can enable through software or BIOS. And this powers the laptop on when you open the lid. Underneath both appear to have plenty of space for air ventilation towards the back. But we can see that both only really bring air in directly above the fans through circular cutouts. The black rectangle that covers the vents on the Legion is a mesh dust filter, while the Victus is solid, so I suppose the Legion might have more airflow in that regard. Here's how both look inside. The Legion 5 has some additional metal coverings. With those removed we can see that both laptops are quite similar. They've got their batteries down the front, two memory sticks and dual channel, two M.2 storage slots, and Wi-Fi 6 cards. Though it needs to be noted that the Wi-Fi in the Victus is underneath the cooler for some reason. So a Wi-Fi upgrade on the Victus would require you to remove this and repaste the CPU and GPU. Far less convenient compared to the Legion. Granted that's probably not a change you'll make often. Despite both laptops having the exact same model of Realtek Wi-Fi card installed, the Victus was a little faster, though both were a fair bit behind many of the Intel options. But you could upgrade this yourself for like $20. All testing in this video has been done with both laptops running their stock memory that they shipped with. I think this better represents a fair comparison as it represents how both laptops would perform out of the box if you would actually go and buy them. So this means that technically my Victus has better x8 memory while the Legion has slower x16 memory. Though we could of course go and upgrade that, it would just cost more money. The battery in my Legion is around 14% larger than my Victus in terms of watt hour capacity. But you can also get the Legion with a smaller 60 watt hour option, so expect different results with that. Interestingly the Victus with smaller battery was lasting around 16% longer in the YouTube playback test. Though the Legion was ahead in the game test. Both results are great and well above average. The software experience on the Legion 5 is better compared to the Victus. Both give you the option to swap between different performance modes. But I had some weird bug on the Victus where it would undo my selection sometimes. Hopefully that gets fixed in an update. Lenovo's Vantage software is just more centralized and you can do more. Everything is done through here including getting updates. On the Victus that's managed through a different program. The Legion also lets you change the performance modes with the function plus Q shortcut and this changes the color of the power button to reflect it. The Victus has no such shortcuts so you have to use the software only. Lenovo's Vantage software also lets us enable or disable hybrid mode aka Optimus, something the Victus does not support at all. The Legion also lets us modify battery and power settings here, again something I didn't find on the Victus. Just before we get into the thermals, I've got to say the BIOS on the Legion was much better. It looks more modern and there are just more options for you to customize compared to the Victus. Though both laptops have TPM 2.0, a security feature which will be required to run the new Windows 11. That's great news because increased security on your devices is a must have these days. Which is why this part of the video has been sponsored by Dashlane. Using the same password for everything is terrible. If just one website gets compromised, attackers can access all of your accounts with the same credentials. But remembering complex and unique passwords can be difficult. Dashlane is the solution. Dashlane is a password management tool for storing all your passwords across any device anywhere. They also store payment and personal information in a secure place that only you can access. So with Dashlane, no more filling out forms and logins. One click and you're in. Dashlane works on all devices on all platforms. And you even get a VPN for streaming content and secure browsing. You're getting both a password manager and a VPN for less than the cost of just one of those services alone. It's worth it just to never have to click the forgot password button again. So if you find this as helpful as I do, you can try Dashlane on your first device for free by going to dashlane.com slash Jared. And when you want to upgrade to premium you can get 50% off by using the coupon code Jared. Let's compare thermals next.
next. I'm only going to look at both laptops in their highest performance modes. If you want to also see thermal results of both laptops in every single performance mode available, then refer to the full review videos linked in the description below. The blue bars represent the CPU, while the green bars represent the GPU temperature. The Victus was warmer on these components when just sitting there idle. With the CPU plus GPU stress test running though, the Legion was warmer on the CPU and GPU. The cooling pad I test with, linked in the description below, was able to improve both laptops. However, the Victus was still cooler. The CPUs were the same with the game running, but the GPU in the Legion was warmer. And then again, both could be cooled further in the game with the cooling pad. These are the clock speeds for the same tests just shown. During the stress test, the Legion was reaching both higher CPU and GPU speeds, so it's performing better with the same hardware, which is probably why it was warmer too. They don't change too much with the cooling pad, as thermals weren't much of a limit. And then in the game, they're much closer together, though the Legion still had the lead. We can see that during the stress test, the Legion has both higher CPU and GPU power limits. More power equals more performance, but also more heat. Basically, the Victus has a 95W3060, while the Legion's is full powered at 115 watts, though it can boost to 130 watts with Nvidia's dynamic boost. Plus, the Victus seems to cap the CPU to 35 watts, while the Legion can go to 45. Granted, in this game, the difference in CPU usage was small. In Cinebench R23, a CPU only workload with the GPU now idle, the Legion 5 was performing better despite both technically having the same Ryzen 7 5800H processor. The Legion was scoring around 9% higher in multi core. Granted, single core was much the same, as generally no laptops are subject to power or thermal constraints there. Things change when running on battery power. The Legion was still ahead when it came to single core, but it's margin of error stuff. The Victus, however, was ahead in multi core now, though only by 5%. So HP seems to perform better on battery. The Legion was cooler to the touch when both were sitting there idle, but that's not to say the Victus was warm. Low 30 degrees Celsius is normal in this test. The Legion was just below average. Neither were hot to the touch while under heavy worst case stress test. The Victus was perhaps a little warmer, but it's close. Let's have a listen to the fan noise. The Legion was more audible when sitting there doing nothing at idle, and it also ends up being just a little louder with the stress test going. Again, at least the Victus has some basic level of fan control, you get nothing on the Legion. Now let's test out some games and find out how both laptops compare. And as mentioned earlier, both laptops are tested with their stock memory here. And the Legion has Optimus disabled as it does have the advantage of a mock switch. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested in Little China with the Street Kid life path on all laptops. I've got both the Legion and Victus laptops highlighted in red. And we can see that the Legion is reaching around 10% higher average FPS in this one. This is in part due to the higher GPU power limit of the 3060 in the Legion, but also because it has a mock switch, which lets us disable Optimus and generally improve performance in games. Anyway, it's not as if the 3060 in the Victus was bad or anything, we're still above 60 FPS at high settings. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark, and this time both laptops were scoring essentially the same. I think we're seeing the different memory in action here. Both of these results are with both laptops laptops tested with their stock memory. The Victus came with x8 sticks, while my Legion came with x16 sticks. If I retest the Legion with x8 memory, it ends up getting 82 FPS, so a nice speed boost. But yeah, just stock out of the box, they're basically the same due to the memory differences. Control on the other hand is fairly GPU heavy, and I don't generally find memory differences to matter as much in this game. This is likely why the Legion was now around 14% faster in terms of average FPS when compared to the Victus, putting it just a couple of FPS behind the lower wattage 3070 and the HP Omen 15 one spot above it, as the Legion has the full powered 3060. I have also tested the Legion 5 with faster x8 memory in this video over here, so check that one out next if you want to see what sort of a performance boost a memory upgrade will give it. Likewise though, it is also possible to boost gaming performance on the Victus by connecting an external screen and bypassing the integrated graphics, and you can check those results in my Victus game test video which is linked in the description below. The Legion 5, shown here by the red bars, was always ahead of the Victus 16, shown by the purple bars in all of the 3D mock tests. Again, makes sense due to the high wattage 3060. Now let's check out some content creator workloads. Adobe Premiere was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark, and both laptops are highlighted in red. There's no real difference here. Technically the Victus was 3 points ahead, but this is easily margin of error stuff in this test, and I suspect this is the memory difference at play again. The difference was a little larger in Adobe Photoshop. The Victus was scoring around 6% higher. This test is generally fairly processor intensive, so yeah, I'd expect the Legion to do better if it also had X8 memory like the Victus. The differences in DaVinci Resolve were also fairly small, but the Victus was still scoring about 5% higher due to the better memory that it shipped with. 
SpecView Perf tests out various professional 3D workloads, and the higher powered 3060 in the Legion 5 shown by the red bars was generally ahead, but that wasn't always the case, it depends on the specific workload. Both of my laptops came with 512GB NVMe M.2 SSDs. In general, the one in the Legion was a little faster, though it depends on the specific test. Both were performing well in any case. The Victus also has an SD card slot, which the 15 inch Legion does not have, but the larger 17 inch model does though. Linux support was tested with an Ubuntu 21 Live CD. Both worked fine, though the Realtek Wi-Fi wasn't recognised on either out of the box as it probably needs additional drivers. I'll give the edge to the Legion though, because you can still use the Function Plus Q shortcut to change performance modes, as they're baked into firmware. The Victus requires software support. Alright, let's discuss pricing and availability next. This will of course change over time, as both of these companies are known to run regular sales, so refer to current prices with the links down in the description. At the time of recording, the Victus with Ryzen 7 5800H, RTX 30 60 graphics and 16 gigs of memory with the screen upgrade is about 1360 US dollars. The Legion is more than $400 more expensive, at least in the configuration I've tested right now. It used to be less money, but I guess supply issues continue to get worse. You could of course get a better price depending on the customizations you make with the links in the description. All things considered, personally I think the Legion 5 is the better gaming laptop, which I guess isn't too surprising as it does cost quite a bit more money. There's definitely a place for the cheaper, more budget friendly Victus. So let's recap both the good and the bad to find out if you should pay more money for the Legion. I'd say the build quality of both is pretty similar as they're both plastic, but I'd say the Legion has an edge simply due to it having less noticeable screen wobble. The Victus is a little larger due to its slightly bigger 16 inch screen, but despite this the Legion was lighter, though once you include the power bricks and cables the Legion ends up weighing more. Personally I liked typing more on the Victus, the clicky keys just felt nicer, but I preferred the touchpad on the Legion despite its smaller size. The power button changing colour to show you the performance performance mode you're in is a nice extra on the Legion, but I thought the speakers were better on the Victus. The I.O. was better on the Legion as you get more USB ports, faster USB speeds, and Type-C charging. Though the Victus has an SD card slot, but the larger 17 inch Legion also has that too if you're after it. Both had the same Wi-Fi 6 card inside. The Victus was a little faster, but it's also harder to get to should you want to upgrade it to a better Intel card. The battery lasts longer on the Victus outside of gaming despite it having a smaller watt hour rating. The Victus also has an edge when running on battery power, as it performs better on Cinebench there. On wall power though, the Legion was ahead as it has both higher CPU and GPU power limits. And this is generally why the Legion ended up being warmer, at least on the internals. As far as the exterior goes where you'll actually be touching, neither was hot to the touch at all. The Legion was generally louder when it came to fan noise though. Just sitting here right now with both laptops idling and doing completely nothing, I can't hear the Victus, but the fan on the Legion has been going the whole time and is audible to me even in the lowest performance mode. The Victus has better fan control, though I suppose the Legion isn't hard to beat as it doesn't have any fan control, unless you go to third party software. The software is better on the Legion, but the Victus was generally performing better in creator workloads due to the faster x8 memory. The Legion would of course win with a memory upgrade, but that's a further additional cost and it already costs more. Likewise in games, generally the Legion was ahead, but due to the memory difference, the Victus could still do well despite the Legion having a mock switch. My Legion happened to have a better screen, but if you were going for the Victus, I'd definitely recommend paying that $40 extra to get the 1080p screen upgrade. This one's just too dim and sometimes the whites look a bit yellow. Not to mention the response time is just way lower compared to the Legion. So yeah, all things considered, I think the Legion does better than the Victus. But despite that, the Victus does still do quite well and in some tests it does come out the winner. It's just that in most of the things I care about, the Legion is ahead. At the end of the day though, if you're just after the best value gaming performance, the Victus is clearly the winner. In many of the games tested, it wasn't actually that far behind the Legion, especially considering right now the Legion is like $400 more. Honestly, it's kind of starting to approach ripoff territory for a 3060 gaming laptop, given I've seen them on sale for $1400. If both laptops are essentially the same price though, I'd probably just go for the Legion, unless you really care about something that the Victus offered, like maybe the better keyboard or better speakers. Anyway, let me know which of these two gaming laptops you would prefer down in those comments below. If you need any further information on either of these two laptops, then refer to the full review videos over here, as I go into even more depth in those. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel for future gaming laptop comparisons like this one, and come and join me in the community in Discord and get behind the scenes videos by supporting the channel on Patreon.